TSA is furious with me. Like, they're all like, and I'm trying to explain, like, it's a landmine. Let me bring it on the plane. Bro, we're live. Uh, welcome to the Boise Hive podcast. Um, I'm so excited to be here today. As always, I'm joined in the studio with my graphic uh, designer, engineer, co-executive producer, Alex Gamble. Go ahead and say hi, uh, hi Alex. The list just goes on. It, it's ridiculous. I, I believe we got Daniel Bueller in house too. Can you say hi, Dad? Where am I? What day is it? Oh, he's back there. <laughs> and then for the first time ever on the Boise High podcast, we have our first band that's going to be here. And um, I have the Madcap Laughs. Say hi, guys. Hey, what's hey, up? Hey, how's it what's going? What's good, man? Yeah, I like the way that sounds. So we're going to get to, into them later. But as always, we're going to talk about just like our hive schedule and stuff. So, um, again, people might know that on top of being a rehearsal space, a food bank, and just a resource for mental health, um, you know, here, there's a lot of things we do, but we do have a mission, and that is to prevent suicide within the music community. And it's obviously a global issue right now. Now, um, and we are happy to amplify what the Hive is doing. So like always, on Tuesdays, we have Life Recovery from 12 to 1.30. On Wednesdays, we have Sober Curious, 6 to 7.30. Um, the last Wednesday of every month, we have Open Mic, 6 to 8. And I will highlight, doesn't matter what type of project you are, what type of gear you have, we'll take it as a challenge. You come on down here, you sign up on the list, and we'll get you on on that stage promise if you're a stand-up um, comedian please come down i want that to happen so you're bad. not the only one that said that i guess that there was a few that they were having and then they you guys haven't had one is that correct uh, there was one guy that showed up once like asking if we had like an open mic one day where he could do stand-up and i told him that we did and um was that the guy that was doing tin whistle lessons no, it was some guy in a suit. It was crazy. I, I was really hoping he would come it's back. It's something worth highlighting because you don't necessarily have to be a band. You don't even necessarily have to play music. You could read poetry. You could do spoken word. Um, you know, you can do a lot of different things at the open mic. We're pretty um, open at our Cross open mic. Genre. Uh, so on um, the last Thursday of every month, I think we have hip hop or is that every Thursday, six to eight? Does yeah, I believe know? it's every, th every Thursday. Every Thursday, I'm sorry. And then Vets Jam It Out on Fridays, uh, 6 to 9. You do not have to be a, met, a vet. It is a kind of acoustic focused, I found out, but it's not limited to that. But you don't have to be a vet. Just come on down here, and we'll get you in on the jam. All right. So, you know, one of the things that we're going to kind of talk about today on this episode is relationships or the correlation of relationships and, and mental health. In doing my research for the podcast, it, it comes up a lot. Um, the uh, relationship stress um, negatively impacting mental health can happen for a number of different reasons, whether it's work related, whether it's a lack of intimacy, money problems are huge. I've seen stuff that like 60% of the marital and relationship issues that result in suicide have some type of money tie um, or financial problem. Um, and, and just in general, 40% of all suicide is tied to relationship problems. Um, this can be things uh, related to marital conflict, divorce. Um, there's just a number of different, you know, talking points that I think are worth bringing up because a lot of us are in relationships and as everyone know these things can have high times they can have low times and depending on how high these highs get and how low the lows get um, it, it can result in this suicide it is a big issue right now um, and uh, I just again the hive is always a resource no matter what type of mental health related issue you're experiencing experiencing um and uh if you do or if you're experiencing any of this stuff and you'd like to go ahead and reach out to us don't hesitate we'll get into our contacts a little bit later we so, can't do a lot about you know intimacy issues but sure. you know, we can help you talk through it <laughs> and it's it speaks to how fragile people are that like uh, a lack of intimacy can have such a dramatic effect on people's mental health and you know if you have an intimate partner, then problems with that relationship can 
be just as devastating sometimes. Yeah, absolutely. Um, okay, so we're going to get into something that we do on every episode, and we are going to get into our first band feature. Um, right now we have a band called Optiflim. We are Optiflin, I'm sorry, and uh, we're going to listen to a track called Emblems. You can find them on Instagram.com forward slash Optiflin, and that is O-P-T-I-F-L-Y-N-N. And again, and this song is called Emblems. Okay, once again, that is Optiflin with Emblems. They can be reached at Instagram.com forward slash Optiflin. Is Optiflin, P-T-I-F-L-Y-N-N. Very good track. All right, so again, first band in the studio today. And again, they are called the Madcap Laughs. Uh, why don't you guys start by introducing yourself and what you do in the band? All right, so I'm Gabe. Uh, I'm the lead singer. I also play some rhythm guitar and some keyboard. I'm Phoenix. I play lead guitar, and sometimes I do vocals, but not normally. Uh, I'm Devin, and I just mainly play the rhythm guitar. That's really it. <laughs> All right, cool. And what, what's the story behind the Madcap Laughs? Like, how did it all happen? So back in, like, freshman year of high school, when COVID like first started being like a thing, me and Devin went to school together and we didn't really know each other, but I thought he was cool and we would talk every once in a while. He definitely looks cool. <laughs> yeah, no, for real. And true. so me and him ended up hanging out a little bit and we ended up in the same circle and it was, I was a very different like kind of dude back then. I mean, I was only like 14 years old, so I wasn't really a person at all. I was kind of just like <laughs> going and just being <laughs> and, um, yeah, Devin kind of introduced me to, like, everything that I do now. Like, he introduced me to the kind of music that I listen to, and he got me into the style of guitar that I wanted to learn to play. And so me and him kind of started this back in, like, 2020, and we didn't know how to play music at all. Like, we had zero musical experience. All <laughs> I did crazy. was That's crazy. I didn't know that. You would never know from your tracks. <laughs> I appreciate that, man. Yeah, but um, from the, like, like from you guys have been only playing instruments and music for a couple years? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. Um, Bravo. Yeah. So um, me and Devin didn't know what we were doing, and we were just kind of messing around and hanging out. And me and him, like, were always together because it was like quarantine. We couldn't really do anything else. So the only person I saw was Devin. Me and Devin just hung out every day. Kind of had to just keep it tight back then. Yeah. There exactly. were times where I, I was just. What a better thing to house. do, though. Just grab a guitar, you play lead, you play rhythm, boom. Yeah, no, we just would like hang out all day and chill for like ever. Like, <laughs> like years? For like, a couple years, right? Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. And um, <laughs> so we started, like, we were really inspired by like Pink Floyd at first and mm -hmm. things like that, the doors. I can and see stuff that. Like that and then we kind of trippy like, rock yeah we yeah. we were really into that for a while but me and Devin just could not like it just wasn't what we were meant to like make in that mm -hmm. in in that exact job more of an influence than a musical direction exactly yeah. yeah and so we started listening to like the dead and then we got oh, really yeah. into jam bands you there know how you it go. is and um yeah, so we ended up kind of moving in that direction, and, you know, we have a lot of funk influences and a lot of jam band influences and stuff. And uh, So how, yeah. when did the lead singer come into the bunch? So me and Devin were, like, trying to make music for 
a year and a half and it was not really going anywhere. I mean, it was cool and we had a good thing. Like, it was cool. It was a lot of work. We built a studio for ourselves and yeah. we did all that, but it wasn't really like going anywhere at the time. And so we just a couple of guys jamming. Yeah. And then we got back into school and then Gabe, we just kind of met him <laughs> through Dude. that. I had a ceramics class, man. Yeah, oh, ceramics, ceramics, ceramics class. class. Yeah, and um, I'll write that down. All the cool kids do ceramics class. Oh, dude, totally. <laughs> and I'm not I, cool. I'm sorry. That's rad. <laughs> <laughs> he was kind of the only. He was kind of the only. The time who we could kind of relate to, like it was kind of just like me and Devin, like had our own kind of like niche, and then. It kind of like that influence kind of spread and we met Gabe and Gabe came into the picture. And at first we were just jamming. Like we did not really make songs. We didn't really like practice super often. We'd get together like once a week. We just jam, hang out. And then it started getting more serious once we got like a drummer into the picture. We had this performance. And he is not here? Um, no, and and back then it was actually a different drummer at the okay. time. Yeah. yeah. And um. And who is that? What What's his name? Uh, their name was Thistle. Oh, so you don't have a drummer right now? No, we, we do. do. Drummer, Our yeah. current drummer is Luke Pearson. There you go. And um, yeah. So. Yeah, no, he's not here right now. Neither That's is okay. our bassist. I just he's wanted to give absent. him a little love. Yeah, no, <laughs> of course. Go. Yeah, they're also absent. Um, where was I? <laughs> when he came in in high school. Yeah. 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 So we were just jamming a lot and we decided to go busking and we thought that we were kind of like good enough at jamming. This is a good to town to busk in, by there the way. Go. Yeah, there absolutely. Is. Absolutely. We had a night where me and Gabe and Devin and our bassist, Jonas, um, went down to like the Grove Plaza area yeah. and just busked for like four hours. And we made, you know, we made a good amount of money. Every, and- whatever they have, jar, every instrument case when you go downtown and you're walking around it all has money in yeah it. there we go yeah they was, all do yeah and uh at this time i don't believe we even had a drummer yeah no that's how we met our first drummer just was like two because... guitar players and a singer jamming and then you found someone on the street <laughs> yeah they they saw someone recorded recorded us oh, and cool. it, that video kind of spread and then they saw it from that and so us, yeah. we started getting up. So us, yeah. we started getting up writing songs and like trying to formulate a little bit. Well, when somebody reaches out to you like that, you kind of got to tell yourself, maybe we are on the right track. Yeah. You know, there we go. Just yeah, don't, don't mess with that trajectory. You yeah. Know? Yeah, exactly. And so that's Plus, actually it's hard to be like, oh, you want to play drum? We don't have a drummer. No, you can't play drums in my <laughs> <laughs> It's really hard to say. Oh, no, we had a sign set up uh, that we needed a drum. Oh, yeah. It was yeah. advertised. Yeah. There we go. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> What a good marketing scheme, and it worked. <laughs> it did, know, right? yeah, wow. it did, it did work. And so we actually wrote Donuts back then, like with our old like uh, outfit. And is that was, the track? We're, that's the track we're going to listen. Yeah, to that's later. the track yeah. we'll listen to today. And it was way different back then. We had our first show with that drummer. the The style was similar, but it was not de- nearly as developed as it is now. It's a yeah. it's a funky little masterpiece right now. <laughs> I appreciate it. Thanks, that. man. Yeah. And that's good yeah. to know that it came from where it did. It feels like. It came from that, like just jamming on the street. And it's something worth discussing, I think, is that in my experience with making music, a lot of the times when you start at your home and you're jamming, it's never really a song until you're in the studio. And then once you're in the studio and you lay it down, it then becomes your song. And you guys are like, oh, this is how it goes and this is how we're going to do it. There we go. But it was – it's nice to see a band that will let that evolve, you know. Change – don't throw a song away. Rework it. Yeah, all of course. Course. You know, yeah. Like Rework it. Try to do something else. It's not like it's already been released on a label. And even if you had, like, still rework it. Do a remix or something. Mm-hmm. So, of course. you know, it's good to show that just sometimes tracks, a lot of the times, the majority of the tra- times, tracks end up in a different direction than you started. Yeah. yeah. Well, and what was cool about this one is I feel like it was born of a lot of experimenting, but we did three takes of this song. And each one was pretty much identical. That's like cool. all of the guitar soloing. Like they were, like you guys were definitely confident in what the plan was for it by then. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah, that's kind of like the style that we go for. I don't like playing things like, like we kind of just jam, but yeah. oh, also with jam the formula, band vibe, one hundred percent. Yeah, we kind of we have a general structure that takes us through the changes, and that's pretty much it. Yeah. You know, we know when the words come, and we know when the big changes. 
Um, and it's and good because live it. you have the freedom to embellish. Absolutely. Yeah, like yeah. if you're just playing like a solo rock out, you can kind of make some eye contact, keep that rolling. You yeah. know what I mean? And yeah. then go yeah. back into it. When you structure it in that way and you kind of built in that flexibility to your project, you can translate that to really cool live performances. There we go, too. man. Yeah. Yeah. You, you know, I, I feel like I feel like in your band, just by seeing your videos and listening to the track, that like you might not hear it the same way every time. Would that be a That's good That's what we call 100%. Yeah, yeah, yeah I, I could totally I feel. feel that. I mean, I listened to the song well over 100 times by now. And yeah, the amount of like layers you can hear in it, the more you listen to it, is like endless. Oh, it's Because I mean, there's three thing. guitars. We know. <laughs> Thanks, guys. Now, what, what's your guys' hive tie in? Like, how'd you guys end up in the studio with the great Alex Gamble? Okay, so our drummer, Luke, was in a band called Bad Moon. Okay. They were, uh, yeah, he was in my guinea pig band. There you mm-hmm. go. Mm-hmm. And so Luke already Family. knew Alex. And he, he, Luke knows a lot more people than we do. Luke's been around a bit more than we have. Sure. So we kind of let him handle a lot of the connections. He knows wow. a lot of people. And this is and the guy so, you got off the sign. No, 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 this is this. Oh, this the, that, was that, yes, that was Thistle. Yes, now we're in, we're onto the Luke era. Yeah, yeah, okay. oh yeah, yeah, yeah. But that's um, when you guys obviously elevated. Yes, hundred percent. Yeah, he's kind of like mini Booker band manager. Does all the you guys just rock? He does the other stuff. Yeah, yeah he does a lot. He does a lot of that kind of stuff. Cool. He knows he knows a lot of people, and so he was like this dude, Alex. He's like you know he's tight, and we should really work with him. And mm-hmm. so he, yeah, he kind of disorganized <laughs> the sure. whole thing. He was like. We need to schedule some time at the Hive and just make sure that we get him, like, producing. Yeah. And so we kind of just let him, like, schedule it. He, We came up with the money to do it. I mean, it was easy. It's cheap. Your guys' rates are it's amazing. It's fantastic, man. Amazing. And for your first couple tracks when you cut them, I come from Southern California, and a lot of times I see bands spend, like, $5,000 on a demo. You know? Yeah. And then when Crazy, they get man. signed, the label has them recorded at their re- resources. So cool, your $5,000 demo got you maybe a label that helped you get an actual album <laughs> cut, but... It got you an album that's going to be shelved indefinitely by a label. You don't necessarily have to spend $5,000 is yeah, what I'm getting exactly. at. Just to get some really good tracks. If your band is good, get yourself in a nice tuned room in a comfortable environment and just track it out. It doesn't have to be such a big production right away. Yeah, and the resources like at hand in this room are like crazy. Yeah. <laughs> so Yeah, Man. to us it was kinda like we have like a whole DIY like situation sure. um in our studio and we we've never really gotten around to recording because it's just a whole other animal. Like Having a jam space is one thing, but mm-hmm. setting it up for recording is very difficult. Or drums, and too. That's when I'm out. Like, I can get a good guitar tone. I can get a good bass tracks and singing vocals, all that stuff. But when it comes time for, like, legit drums, yeah, I just up, don't have that up. capacity yeah, you, at my house. Yeah, you can't. You need more than one microphone. You Absolutely. need to have a whole setup if mm-hmm. you want to get some good drums. Exactly. Bus inputs, everything, everything coming on individual tracks. Yeah. yeah. It has to be done legit. And that's what's nice about coming here. Exactly. You get all the benefits but at an affordable price yeah man yeah. we spent $40 to yeah. make donuts yeah it's doing great <laughs> it's like that's unheard of yeah, yeah. it's getting close to a thousand, a thousand streams. streams on Spotify yeah there it's only go. been up Already. for like 40 bucks oh, a week yeah it's getting yeah, no real joke, close Alex. man there you it's go like 900 some right now 61, you guys will monetize soon 61 I yeah. think once you get like around seven thousand, that's when we started to do that. Mm-hmm. But if you guys are already at a thousand already, they'll send you your little monetize letter. You Hell guys yeah! Can make awesome. a PayPal or something and just have it automatically go in there and just let it rack up. Yeah, Hell yeah, that would be you awesome. Guys, you guys are going to get there real, real quick if that's what's happening. And it, I can't say this enough: being in Treasure Valley and starting a band in this community is one of the best I've ever seen. People oh, will jump on man. board. They'll yeah. come to your shows. People you don't even know will be reaching out to you. Yeah, you already yes, hundred percent. You know, like this is a great community to start a project and really and, and, and you know, uh, you got to be good. You got to put some time in it. But just the amount of energy and talent we have right now in the Treasure Valley is just unbelievable. Yeah, and if you yeah. put like like some effort in, and a lot of people see that you make good friends who really want to help you out. We have some really great friends. Yeah, we yeah, have we a whole little like community around oh, I'm sure. us that is so helpful. Like we had a show last night that was 
it was it was late and it was so cold. We were outside oh, in no. the middle of some dude's backyard in, out in Star. Yeah, just and very it random. It was freezing, and so by the time we were at the end of the night, by the time we were on, no one was sticking around there. But oh. all of our friends, like the people yeah, who care about us, buddies, they just man. stuck around. Kept you going, and yeah, we absolutely. still had a great like set, like, even though there was it's only like time. a handful of people there. We still those had a great are shows set. that you have to do. Yeah, yeah exactly. Absolutely. Bands, it's great even if you only meet a few people at that show that might follow you that might come to the next show you sometimes you just gotta even almost mentally as a band you gotta play an empty bar 100 yeah. percent. yeah you gotta yeah. get through that yeah if you can be a band and play a freaking empty bar like kind of a glorified band practice yeah you know, exactly that's, 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 yeah. that's kind of what you know, it was last you know night, it's yeah. what it feels like sometimes but like you gotta it's gonna happen it's yeah. all part of becoming a band and starting playing shows there yeah every show is such a massive especially these early but shows idaho cold that's yeah, it was tough. I mean, tough. guitars it was like 30, and other yeah. instruments It's hard to feel your like fingers, man. Wind. Yeah, no, The we have a cabinet, like, for the bass, and it could not, not only was it not getting enough power because we were out in some dude's backyard. Totally. It, um, the cold, what it could not, it, it, it like sounded awful. It's a tube in. But, you know. It warmed up. Yeah, it could not warm yeah. up. It just uh, wouldn't. It just wouldn't. And so we just rolled with it, and yeah. we we didn't have the bass up super loud. It kind of was just under everything. Yeah. And so, like, it worked Typical backyard out. show, just make it happen. Yeah. There we go. Yeah. And um, usually, that like, uh, if this was a few months ago, like we would have been stressing about it, yeah, but and um, we totally. would have been freaking out. Like it would have been a whole thing. And the the house I don't shows we had before, right now. <laughs> yeah, it's cold. <laughs> yeah, the house shows we've had before were like. I, at least I don't know about everybody else, but I was like anxious. Like I, oh, I, yeah. I had a lot oh, of anxiety. For sure. And um, this time it was just kind of like we just did it, and it was cool. It was and and tonight we have another show at the high note, and. I'm super hyped for that because last night was a great practice. We we have like a like a good set down. We've got everything down the way we want it, and so Perfect. tonight it should go really. Smooth. I could tell that you guys are getting more well rehearsed because there's no way you could have like that jam band vibe if you weren't comfortable with your music. Yeah, it would oh, just totally. be all over the place, and it is like a. It's a calculated chaos. Yeah, if I will, that's you know? exactly right. So to jump over to another component of the music, um, I'm curious how you guys kind of do the lyrics, especially for Donuts, because the lyrics for Donuts are like kind of fascinating. It's a whole story going on. So initially, um, <laughs> me and Devin took this big like road trip with his family, and we went down to like San Francisco and all these places. And I had never really traveled before. Devin's done a decent amount of traveling, but. I the farthest I've ever been before this was like the Oregon coast, so I haven't really been around that much. And we went back to the yeah, we went, we, went we hit the coast, we went all the way down California to San Francisco, came up through Nevada, like we went to a bunch of places, and it was like something I had never experienced before. Did you guys go to Haight Ashbury? Yeah, we did. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. You know. Down on Haight Street <laughs> just for breathing in the oh, smoke, and yeah. we got a picture on the same spot where the Grateful Dead took the picture. Of the sure. Yeah, we were sign. doing, it we were hitting though. all the stops, man. Yeah. We were, we, yeah. We have a picture of like where Dennis appear? Joplin there, lived. Did you search the picture? later just to see if there oh, was, like, I was, <laughs> I was Seriously, like getting I don't the know. whole thing down man I was like I'd be like, zooming uh, in on every uh, little tree like is Jerry's face in there yeah no, that, <laughs> there yeah, we go man. I was getting calculated with it man <laughs> yeah and so that experience really inspired me like that oh. that really pushed my creativity like to another place because it was just a huge like, it was just a huge experience for me and so the music me and Gabe, is big up there too or down there too yeah and so me and Gabe one night decided, like, we're just going to stay up all night and try and write a song. We literally did not have a single song, like, full lyrics. It was probably our first full song. Yeah, And so, so we, we just spent a whole night writing, and I was just trying to pull out all the inspiration I could from that trip. And I came up with, like, a little story, and it's this dude, and he's, you know... It's been on the run for run, too man. long, you know? And um, <laughs> that's, that's a great idea. Yeah, and so it kind of just went from there. And then at first, the structure was really simple. It still is pretty simple, but it, initially it was very, very simple. The licks make up for it. Yeah, and so we, you know, we've added so much more to yeah, we it. we have and, different kinds of donuts with the, now. With the drummer yeah. we have now. Yeah, because it's a big sound. It is. Yeah. yeah. It's a the, big sound. And Luke yeah. is a Freaking yeah, Luke is oh, absolutely so crazy like, on the drums. It is amazing. He is so good. Totally just tied it all in. Because yeah, after hearing 100%. the track and seeing the live videos, 
it would almost appear that he was around day one, but which makes sense because that's when you guys got that new life. Yeah, he's only been in the bands for like eight months. I think. Yeah, and he crazy. has much different like influences. He has like metal influences. Yeah, he's gives a little structure too to, to yeah, the chaos. He gives it a lot of power, man. Yeah, yeah, and so Dynamics. it creates it yeah. creates a really unique sound because we don't play metal, but he plays like metal drums, and totally. so it's something that. I think really in a funky way. Yeah, yeah. in a funky yeah. way. Yeah, yeah. It's cool. Yeah, it's like a funky metal. Yeah, yeah. so yeah. crazy. Swung sixteenths on the kick all there day. Yeah. <laughs> um, and then uh, to jump over to another track that's uh, on deck right now, um, it's called "Dear Friend." Yes. I'm also that's really curious song. about kind of where the lyrics for that come from because you know, not only does the music itself have like is it it's a great song, but uh, the lyrics to it have like a really nice sort of sincerity to it and i was hoping you could talk about that one too yeah no so that was all luke luke wrote that song and he had had it fully completed like before he even joined the band i believe or mm. maybe like right luke's at the just start. on the beat right now like getting shows like on on i can see like he's they're all luke's here chilling. Fantastic, man. he's probably on the pavement <laughs> as we speak right now <laughs> yeah this luke guy he's yeah crazy so man. dear friend was all luke and okay. uh, we kind of came together and so he writes built lyrics upon too. it. Yeah, yeah, no, yeah. Luke oh, writes right. some yeah. lyrics as well. Yeah, it's most it's me and Phoenix and Luke usually that are. That's cool. On the lyrics nice. So it's a collective thing. Hundred percent. Yeah, no. it's really difficult Sometimes to write bands lyrics can't get in that creative when all bands environment. Are. You know what I mean? Sometimes it's somebody writes a song, somebody writes a song like the Beatles. Exactly. You know? Yeah. And then it doesn't come together. I think the more you can in, in, instill that everybody put in on it, I, I would keep that going. Yeah, when it's a team effort, like. You can really get like the most out of a project, and then everyone feels a part of it. Exactly, it's not like John brought the song and now we have to learn his song. It's like no, we created this. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah my band, we, we do that a lot. What it might start with a beat, it might start with like a little lead, and then I'll throw a track on it. He'll throw a track on it. We'll go. What does it need now? Okay, are you gonna do it? Am I gonna do it? And then we just kind of like build it organically together. So then it becomes our track. Because at first I was kind of making tracks, and he was making tracks and right, then right. we were getting together and it worked but we, we've kind of changed to a more collective writing process and we're instrumental so it's probably even easier but um we, we like to write that way as well there we go yeah and a lot of our songs start out from just instrumental things we're jamming with somebody's got a little lick exactly yeah, yeah. like um vomitorium was kind of just yeah we've a got jam. this song called vomitorium it's pretty cool yeah <laughs> <laughs> and then uh, gabe wrote some lyrics and it was, it was like Great. So Actually, now Luke wrote the lyrics. Oh, Luke wrote the lyrics. No. This yeah. has just been so, great. But let's let's jump into a hive question here. What do you guys think about the relationship between music and mental health? I think it's absolutely music connects people all over the world, man. I think 100%. it's really beautiful. Um, so yeah, I think a song can make you. I like how music can convey emotion, like absolutely in all ways, man. There's a lot of people that write really powerful music from experiences that like they've struggled with mental health and they put it out into a song and like um like dancing in the moonlight that's like that's an incredibly powerful song and it's awesome i love it and the way like where it came from is like it's a dark story so yeah, there we go. yeah i think that music conveys stories in a way that like normal thing like normal stories could not convey it it touches you at a level that's like super, super deep at the core of like your humanity. And I, music really controls a lot of my like mental health, like in a good way, in a positive way. Well, it's like, a great outlet. Yeah, yeah. I always, you know, I rely on music always. If I'm struggling, I listen to music, I create music always. That is my go to medium always. And it's something that has carried me through like some of the most difficult times in my life, no matter how much I'm struggling, I can always like pick up a guitar and express myself that way. And that's one of the most beautiful things about learning how to play music is Absolutely. that you have this outlet, even no matter how alone you are, no matter how much you're struggling, as long as you just have that instrument. You just got an acoustic. Yeah, there we anything, go. anything. You, you can drum, express whatever. yourself in a way that's like another level that's not, you know, like it's your own thing. It's your own thing that you, you can help cope. And it's a perfectly healthy way of coping as well. It's you know, th there's nothing about it is harming you. It's it's Absolutely. all good. It's there we a, go. It's a completely amazing and perfect thing. And you can yeah. make something super beautiful from something that you know really got you down. Oh, exactly. absolutely. I saw this thing online that was a chord chart, and it was like a happiness scale. Mm 
Mm-hmm. And I never thought about it in that way, but like on the other, on the sadness scale, it was like A minor. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. You know, and then on the happiness scale, it was like G. Yeah, and yeah like exactly. other stuff. And it makes sense too because that's what makes a dark song dark or a bright song or a happy song happy. 100%, yeah. Is what type of you wouldn't want to do a happy song in A minor. You know, it, you probably could get away with it, but if you slow it down, yeah. throw it in A minor, you might convey that emotion better. 100%. But it was yeah. interesting to see a guitar scale or music scale like happiness chart. You know? And to, to, you know, cool. to quote like, this is Spinal Tap, D minor really is the saddest key. There you go. <laughs> spinal Tap is awesome. D minor. <laughs> D minor, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> So I think today this is going to wrap it up. Um, I want to thank the Madcap Laughs. They have been wonderful today. Um, and I hope you guys get to where you guys want to be. And I think you guys will get there. You guys have the great attitude. And you Appreciate got this loop it, guy. And according <laughs> according there we to go. Like, the formulas, you just find this loop guy, <laughs> insert him, and your band just takes off. So um, – We'll go over some Hive contacts. If you guys want to get a hold of us, we can be reached through boisehive.org. We also have our YouTube channel. Just search Boise Hive. Telephone number 208 208- Three four 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 nine nine four, and also we also there is a new suicide and crisis line. So if you need that, you can text nine eight eight eight. Again, this is Nino. I'm joined in the studio with Alex as always, and this has been the Boise Hive podcast. Let's go! All right, and taking us out today, we got. Donus by the Madcap Laughs, recorded right here at the Boise Hive. Uh, you can find him again at uh, Instagram at Madcap underscore Laughs. Oh.